Hello students, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to learn about the dry cell or Leclanche cell. Before that, let's see some of the introduction about these concepts. First, what is actually the function of a cell or battery? Here, we are studying about the dry cell. So, what is the function of this cell? Means the conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy is a function of a cell or a battery. See here. I will write the function of this. Here the conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy is a function of the cell or battery. And we have to keep it in mind that a cell is designated as a single unit whereas a battery is an arrangement of two or more cells. This cell is the single unit whereas this battery is the arrangement of two or more cells usually these are these cells are connected in series or parallel to supply the necessary current or voltage in the batteries see here it is designated as a single unit whereas these batteries is the arrangement of two or more cells usually connected in series or parallel. These cells are classified into three types. The first one is primary cell and the second one is secondary cell and the third one is fuel cell. In this video we are going to learn about the primary cell in the primary cell there are two types that is in the, uh, that is a uh, dry cell and mercury cell in this video we are going to learn about this dry cell it is also called as leclanche cell see here these primary cells cannot be recharged or reused whereas these secondary cells can be recharged and can be reused see here these primary cells cannot be recharged cannot be recharged or they cannot be reused whereas these secondary cells can be recharged and can be reused these cannot be reused this is the difference between the primary and secondary cells and we can understand it better when the topic comes. So now coming to the primary cell that is in this video we are going to learn about the dry cell. Now let's look at the diagram of this dry cell or Leclanche cell. This cell is named as Leclanche cell after its discoverer. See here. It is a diagrammatic representation of the dry cell or Leclanche cell. Look at the image of the dry cell. It originally looks like this. This is the diagram of this dry cell. See here. It is a zinc container. Try to understand this diagram. See, it is the zinc container here. Outside, this is the zinc container. And next, this zinc container is acting as an anode here acting as anode whereas this graphite rod it is a graphite rod this graphite rod is acting as a cathode it is a metal cap look at the diagram here see it is a metal cap and this is a zinc container it is acting as an anode whereas this graphite rod is acting as a cathode this zinc container is in contact with the paste of NH4Cl and ZnCl. See, it is a zinc container and it is a paste. This paste is in immediate contact that is NH4Cl and ZnCl2 is in contact with this zinc container. Whereas this graphite rod, graphite rod is in the contact with this MnO2 plus carbon. See, let's write the point here. Here, zinc is in zinc container is in contact with the paste of NH4Cl plus ZnCl2. 
whereas this carbon sorry graphite rod is in contact with mno2 plus carbon so we can say that that anode is in contact with the nh4cl and zncl2 whereas the graphite rod that is cathode is in contact with this manganese oxide and also carbon powder why this is with this carbon is used means here the conductivity of this mno2 is low so this granulated carbon that means powdered carbon is is used to increase the conductivity why because the conductivity of this manganese oxide is very low so to increase the conductivity here the carbon is used so it is a powdered carbon or it is also called as granulated carbon so it is a very very easy diagram here is a metal cap we have seen that these dry cells cannot be reused cannot be recharged once their work is done they cannot be reused so we can see in the normal normal remote batteries we cannot be reuse it again so once the power is dead it cannot be reused again there are two types of reactions in this dry cell that means the first one is electrode reactions these are also called as primary electrode reactions which involves the whereas this reaction involves the electrodes only whereas in the secondary reactions are also present so let's say, see about the primary and secondary reactions involved in this dry cell and another important point to keep it in mind this is it, it is a positive terminal whereas this negative terminal if you connect here the reaction is carried out like this and see we may try in our childhood that if we connect a bulb here if you keep a bulb here and this is a negative terminal and it is a positive terminal and this bulb will glow so it is seen in the, as it is a normal battery so it is a dry cell or lactanchi cell now let's see the reaction of this dry cell or lactanchi cell now let's see the electrode reactions electrode reaction these electrode reactions will involve only the electrodes so these are also called as primary electrode reaction electrode reactions see we here are the two cases we are uh, considering this electrode reactions at cathode what happens and what at anode what happens first we have to write about the anode here we already know that we have already discussed that here the anode is zinc okay here at anode what happens means oxidation oxidation will be taken place and oxidation means what is oxidation means here the loss of electrons will be taken place so at anode that is zinc oxidation is taken uh, oxidation is taken place that means loss of electron is taken place so let's write this zn is given rise to zn2 plus plus 2 electrons minus so it is a reaction at anode so it is anode is zinc so the loss of electron is carried out that means two electrons are lost whereas in the next at cathode at cathode what happens here what is cathode here we already know that that is a zinc uh, sorry that is graphite rod is a cathode so here it is immediate contact it is in immediate contact with this mn O two, that is manganese oxide, and H two O plus. What is here at cathode? What happens means reduction happens. Okay, what is reduction means? Here is gain of electrons, gain of electrons. Here, after the completion of reaction, what happens means M N O O H. C M N O. These two ox, the these two oxygens are utilized, and one H is utilized. And what we are remaining with another O H. So it is O H minus. So here this M N O two is in plus four oxidation state, whereas 
after the completion of this reaction this mno oh minus here in this mno oh minus this is uh, reduced to plus 3 oxidation state so from coming to plus 4 to plus 3 oxidation state one electron is utilized so this electron is taken from this anode so mno2 plus h2o plus one electron will give rise to mno oh plus OH minus so it is in plus 4 oxidation state and it is in plus 3 oxidation state let's calculate this MnO2 see here we don't know this uh, Mn so let's keep it as X plus 2 into minus 2 that is 2 oxygens or uh, charge on the oxygen is the minus 2 will get uh, is equal to 0 so plus into minus minus 2 to the 4 so we'll get plus 4 whereas in the second one in the second one in this MnOOH. See, we don't know this Mn, so let's keep it as X plus oxygen is minus 2 plus oxygen is minus 2, whereas the charge on the hydrogen is um, plus 1 is equals to 0. So, after calculating, we'll get plus 3. So, from coming plus 4 to plus 3 oxidation state, one electron is utilized. So, we are writing it as here, here we are mentioning it as one electron. Okay. Now, let's see the overall reaction of this. So, at the anode, we have seen this uh, zinc is reacting at cathode, this MnO2 plus uh, H2O is reacting. So, what is the overall reaction of this? Let's see it now. See, overall reaction. Let's write it as overall reaction. Now, let's take this. Zn is giving rise to Zn2 plus plus 2 electron minus whereas this one at anode at cathode we have written this reaction but at, uh, at cathode we have to at anode we have written this reaction or, but at cathode we have to write this reaction so this at uh, the reactant side MnO2 plus H2O plus electron it is giving rise to MnO OH plus OH minus the overall reaction is like this so write this one Zn MnO2 plus H2 on this side that is Zn MnO2 plus H2O and here in the reactant side what is remaining that is Zn2 plus that is Zn2 plus C we have written Zn MnO2 H2O these are on the reactant side whereas in the product side we are we, we have got Zn2 plus plus MnO OH plus OH minus this is the overall reaction of this electrode reactions now let's see about the secondary reactions now coming to the secondary reactions we have seen that hydroxyl ions are li liberated that means at cathode see at cathode hydroxyl ions are liberated see here this hydroxyl ions are liberated these hydroxyl ions generated during the cell reaction liberate ammonia from ammonium chloride see by reacting with ammonium chloride these hydroxyl ions will liberate ammonia let's see the reaction see by the reaction of ammonium chloride let's take 2 NH4Cl 2 NH4Cl plus 2 OH minus okay will give rise to what it will be giving rise to it should give ammonia okay that means 2 NH3 plus 2 H2O plus 2 Cl minus this is the reaction see this is the secondary reaction let's men mention it here secondary reactions in the secondary reaction what happens means the hydroxyl ions which are liberated during the cell reaction liberate ammonia from ammonium chloride. Okay, see 2 NH4Cl plus 2 OH minus will give rise to 2 NH3 plus 2 H2O plus 2 Cl minus. Next, what next in the next step what happens means this NH3, this NH3 is highly explosive so to control it which in turn combined with the Zn plus ions to form a precipitate. 
or a complex that is precipitate complex will be formed when this NH3 is combined with the Zn2 plus ions. See Zn2 plus plus 2 NH3 plus 2 Cl minus will give rise to Zn and NH3 twice and Cl2. See Zn NH3 twice and Cl2. This is a complex. Why this complex is uh, formed means this uh, ammonia is highly explosive. So to avoid it, the complex is formed by utilizing this ammonia and Zn2 plus ions. So in the secondary reaction, what happens means the hydroxyl ions which are liberated during the cell reaction will be combining with the ammonium chloride. See, it is ammonium chloride and it will give rise to ammonia. Okay, ammonia and water and 2Cl minus and these ammonia which is liberated, which is formed in this reaction will combine with the Zn2 plus ions. Okay, these will combine with the, uh, this Zn2 plus ions and it will form a complex. That is Zn NH3 twice Cl2. It is a precipitate complex so, to avoid the explosion. See, these are the secondary reactions which are not directly involved in the electrode reactions and so they do not contribute for the EMF of the cell. So these secondary reactions do not contribute, do not contribute to the EMF of the cell, EMF of the cell. But these reactions are irreversible, irreversible and therefore the cell cannot be recharged the cell cannot be recharged in this secondary sorry this dry cell or Lacanchi cell and another important uh, point is the fresh dry cell has potential of 1.5 volts that is a fresh dry cell as a potential is having a potential that is 1.5 volts at, at the starting but after using the voltage of the cell decreases gradually with uses and finally it has to be discarded it should be thrown out initially it will be having 1.5 volts of potential but after using it will be reduced and we should throw out it cannot be reused so applications I have already said that these are used in the flashlights, in the TV remotes also. They cannot be reused. So let's write flashlights, uh, portable radios, portable radios and transistors, uh, tape recorders like that. So these are the application of this dry cell. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to our channel and share our videos and please support us. Thank you.